Well, thank you for having me up here. Uh, exciting time of year. We're, uh, we're excited to get started to play some football and go against other people and, and get the chance to prove again we're as good as we think we are. I, questions, whatever we got. So what's it like to open camp with a ton of veterans on defense? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we, we're replacing, we lost six guys that played a lot. Um, the good thing in our program is <clears throat> we've been in the program long enough now that everybody knows the expectations. So we're going to try and plug in some pieces. We're going to be young in the secondary. Um, there's, there's a couple spots that we might need a freshman to play. And uh, Coach Long has taught me since uh, I've been in this, in this gig that the further you are away from the ball, the better chance you have to play. And uh, so we can put a DB out there and have a chance to be successful if they're athletic enough. And so we've got a couple spots there that we need to uh, see if we can get those guys to play. Now, luckily, we've had them this four, these four, first four practices. All the young guys are out there, so we get a chance to see if uh, they can actually learn something and learn what to do before the veterans get here. And then when we start going full speed with the veterans, they'll have an idea of what to do, and they can show whether they can play or not. And if they're better than the guys that we've got right now, they're going to play. And if they're not, then we'll play with who we've got and, and step out there on the field. What's the toughest part of teaching 3 3 five? Um, You know, I, I think if you ask any coach on our staff, um, we coach effort around here harder than anything. Um, I don't think by position there's a whole lot of hard teaching things. We, uh, we play a lot of um, coverages where we're combination coverages, things change by formation, um, whether it be the front or the back end, a lot of those things change. So it's all broken down in, into position, though. So I think um, the, the hardest thing is, is getting those guys to recognize the formation and then adjust. Um, but you'll hear our coaches as you're out there on the sideline, uh, effort play hard. Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of coaches that come in and want to see what we're doing to be good on defense, wh how we're able to be as successful as we've been. And I think the, the proudest thing that we'll take from that is all those coaches say how hard we play. We've got a bunch of guys running to the ball trying to cause turnovers. We've been very successful in causing turnovers the last two years. Um, sometimes that, that's some luck. The ball bounces your way, you get it. Um, we've been pretty up, high up there in interceptions the last two years. I think you have to give all the credit to the players. We've got good football players. Uh, I think Coach Long is magical on Saturdays, and he puts them in a great position, and, and they've made plays. And everybody says they want their guys to play hard, right, from the top to the bottom. How do you guys make that happen? Is it, is it a matter of recruiting the guy with the right attitude? Well, how does it happen that you guys end up getting those guys to do that? I think uh, a lot of it is the culture. I think the older guys expect that out of the younger guys now. When we first got here, it was, uh, it was a little different. They, they, it wasn't that same pace. Um, I think as coaches, we chase them around. Um, we, we, go, we practice at a very fast speed. Um, we, are, we, try and, we don't do a whole lot of teaching out there on the field as far as stopping and correcting and all that. We do that in the, in the classroom on tape. So we're out there constantly making sure that they're getting to the ball, that they're hustling, that they're running around. And then the older guys, when they do it, the younger guys see that that's the expectation. And so there's as much them policing it as us. And that's just be kind of become who we are. And so the guys that don't, the older guys ridicule them and, and they weed themselves out. So the, the younger guys, in the first couple of days, they get embarrassed in practice when they get caught walking around or something and stuff that you see. It's, it's very apparent. It stands out. So all the older guys will be like, are you kidding me? And so um, the culture has kind of evolved into those guys taking uh, pride in playing hard, and they do. Your first conference game is about 6,000 feet above sea level. Yes, sir. How do you prepare your new players for a 60-minute game at high altitude? Uh, you know, I think that's the most important game of the season, the first conference game. Air Force is going to be good. Uh, it's in Colorado Springs. Um, to be honest with you, in today's football with all the TV timeouts, th those boys don't get tired. I mean, it, it's uh, – um, the altitude, if you, don't, if you don't talk about it and give them a reason to have an excuse to be tired, uh, they don't think about it. Uh, we played at Wyoming twice last year. I mean, that's higher than Colorado Springs. Um, we didn't have any issues with it on the sideline. Uh, there's, I mean, there, there's, there's so many different breaks during the quarter of football games now with TV commercials and everything that, I mean, as good a shape as these guys are in, they've been here all summer running. I don't, I don't anticipate that being a big deal. Um, it's funny, though, when, you, when you're getting your butt whooped, all of a sudden the elevation's a big deal. If you're not, it doesn't matter. So I think, uh, I think with all the TV timeouts and the preparation, I think we'll be fine. Kenny, is this a very tough conference to be a coordinator in considering pro set, spread, 
wishbone option veer? I mean, everybody's running something different. You know, I think uh, I think it gives you an advantage as you move forward. I mean, you get to see everything. Um, I think it, it, everybody is kind of starting to copy what Coach Horton and our guys do on offense because we've been successful um, for a while there. Uh, we'd go up against teams, and they would never see a fullback, so they'd have no idea how to stop it. Um, I think uh, some of the stuff that we do against the spread is really, really good. Um, and I think Coach Long uh, is probably the best defensive mind against the wishbone. I think he's one of the best defensive minds in college football. But what he does against the wishbone, how he understands it being that he was a wishbone quarterback, um, has given us as coaches an opportunity to, to learn from him. And we give our kids, um, I think we give them a pretty good chance. Now it's almost impossible to prepare for uh, the triple option in three days. Um, when we have two weeks, we have a lot more, uh, we can do a lot more things schematic wise. Um, our kids get a little bit used to seeing it. Um, now what we show them in practice and what they see on game day, isn't even close. Uh, the first few snaps of a triple option team, our DVs are getting cut like trees. Um, and they have no idea where those, I mean, you get a 260 pound offensive lineman cutting you and you have no, you've never seen it in practice. It's, it's funny, we get them over the sideline and, and if we can get them to calm down, everything seems to be okay. Um, now, the previous two years, we didn't have a triple option team on the schedule. So we didn't practice it in spring ball, we didn't practice it in fall camp. Well, now we've got two for sure on the schedule. So we spent a lot of time in spring and we'll spend some time in fall camp um, practicing some of that stuff to give our kids an idea of how we're gonna line up to it. Um, the scout look is never the same because of the speed, but I think um, that helps. I think it's tremendous the years that we've done that, uh, that we know we're going to play Air Force or um, if we have, when we had Army on the schedule and we do that during the, the fall camp and spring ball, I think it's a, a huge benefit. Danny, as, as intricate at times as a 3 3 5 is, you know, I watch it and I'm, I'm just trying to read hieroglyphics. I don't right. know what the hell's going on. If you've got a guy who's kind of wet behind the ears, a young guy out there, and he may not have it completely grasped, but he's given that 100% effort that you, you want to see. He has that athletic ability. Can that make up for it early on in the season, or do you, you absolutely have to have it down pat? Well, I mean, it's our job to, to teach him and all that stuff. Um, you can make up for mistakes by playing hard. Part of the reason that we believe in the effort and, and the hardness of this is if you run up there and, and you do something wrong, but you go full speed, you're going to cause something to happen and people can react. Um, the, the really, really neat thing about the 335 and, and stuff that we do is we can get into every traditional defense that everybody in America does. We just do it 100 different ways, whether we have a D lineman lineup as a three technique over a guard, or we have a linebacker run right through a shoulder. It's the same thing, it's just we have a different way of getting to it. And that causes the offenses some problems because they don't know who it's going to be, so it eliminates what they do. Um, the part that we need to do, and, and as coaches, and it's by, by position, um, we don't give them, especially like the first four days of practice, we've been very vanilla, which our vanilla doesn't look vanilla to most people. But by position, we haven't thrown a whole lot at them. Now on Monday, it's all in. So these guys that have been doing what they've been doing here the last four days and they see everything that the veterans are doing on Monday, they'll start to get a little bit confused and they'll start second guessing themselves. It's our, sales not, it's our job to, to keep them going, but keep them going at that full speed level so if they do make a mistake, it does make up for it. And we've been able to, I mean, you'll see, shoot, a lot of our veterans make mistakes, but at times it doesn't look like a mistake because they're going so hard and they make a play. And all of a sudden, sometimes we implement that because it works so good. So it works out. Are there three or four guys, you have to replace about six starters on defense. Mm -hmm. Are there three or four in your mind that you're really kind of keen on to, to name any names? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think in the secondary alone, I mean, uh, DeMonte and Malik, uh, I think those two guys, um, they had played a ton of football. Um, they were really good football players. So um, we have some really good football players behind them. They just haven't played any games yet. And so at safety especially, um, I, I know Parker Baldwin's played a whole lot. He'll fill in. He filled in for Naya McGee when he got hurt last year, and we didn't miss a beat. Trenton Thompson, who's going to start the field warrior, has a, a lot of the same abilities that Malik had, except he's played about 12 snaps in the game. Um, we're very in a very similar situation as we were going into the 2013 season where those guys hadn't played. I mean, we had Malik Smith, Trey Lomax, and Nye McGee starting for the first time. <clears throat> they had played, Malik had played 13 snaps, and that was all the snaps we had on defense for those guys in the secondary. Um, Parker's played a ton. Um, Trenton got some experience last year. 
Um, Trey Lomax is a great football player who um, we played situational football with last year with Cam Kelly. Now we moved Cam Kelly out to corner because um, we believe that we've got other guys, young guys in the program that, that can help take his spot. We've got two young corners, um, Ron Smith, who played a lot last year, and Kyrie Woods, who are really talented. If those two are good enough and, and we need to move Cam Kelly back inside, he's smart enough that he's able to do that. Up front, um, we've got a whole bunch of bodies that are really, really good-looking dudes that just haven't played football yet against guys. I mean, they haven't played mature football against the guys that we're going to play against. So Noble Hall, he's played a whole lot. Sergio Phillips, he's played a whole lot. We've got guys like uh, Chibu, who hadn't played. We count on him playing. Um, we think we've got guys that are physically talented enough. And when, once we get through UC Davis and then we play Arizona State and Stanford, we've been talking that we're good enough to beat all these people. Now it's our chance to show up and prove it. So we're excited to play them all. And then first, first conference game is the most important game on our schedule. And we can't wait to go up against Air Force. And we think we have the guys to do it. When you look at the conference, I think there's 10 veteran quarterbacks back. Mm -hmm. Obviously led by Ricky and Josh Allen. It's a conference loaded. It is, uh, and they're all good. I mean, Josh Allen is as good a looking kid. I mean, he's six foot four, six foot five, two hundred fifty pounds. The the play he made um, on Demonte's interception in the championship game is one of the greatest football plays I've seen because the young man knew what he was doing. He ran over there, dove, caused the fumble, jumped up, signals touchback. I mean, that's a a smart, smart football player. And shoot, he gained three yards for him on that play. Uh, they had first and ten on the seventeen, or second and ten on the seventeen. Now it's first and ten on the twenty. And it should have been a huge momentum shift in our play. Just a great play by him. Nick Stevens at Colorado State, great player. Um, ripping it at uh, Boise State. I mean, we're excited to, to get to play Boise again. We haven't played them for a few years, and we get him at home. He's a great quarterback. Um, the guy at Air Force, really good option quarterback. I mean, there's a whole bunch of quarterbacks in this league that, I mean, it's a good league. We're excited to, to get a chance to play them and, and see what we can do to confuse them. There's three new coaches on the West side. I know I think, it's, I think it brings some new challenges on both sides. Um, I think it's, it's, um, it helps both sides. I mean, they haven't gone against us for the, the three previous years, like the coaches at San Jose State and Nevada had. Um, so that'll be, <clears throat> they'll see a bunch of film, but it's different when you get out there. The same for us. We'll see six or seven, eight games of tape, but we won't have gone against them. They won't, we won't know how they're going to attack us. Um, but. Two or three series in, we'll know. They'll know, and, and we'll find out who it is by whoever's playing the best and who's the toughest. Uh, but it's, it's good. It, it's, um, the fact that they haven't gone against us on game day is, uh, is difficult for somebody, so that's good. Stability is kind of rare in the college game as you go back way deep with Juan. Can you just talk about your relationship with him and yeah. starting out and elevating now to defense coordinator? I'm, I want, first, I just, I'm very honored that he, he feels that I uh, deserve this title. Uh, Coach Long has been unbelievable to me in, uh, in football. Um, I played for him my senior year, was his first year as the head coach at New Mexico. Um, he asked me after that if I wanted to be a GA. I was a GA for a couple years. He hired me on full time. So been with him, a part of him, with the last 18 years, which is, like you said, in this business is very uncommon. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I think I've got the opportunity to learn under the greatest defensive mind in college football. I mean, he'll give you, he'll go back and give all the credit to Don Matthews and Jolie Dunn for this scheme um, of what we do and 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 who he learned it from. Um, he has kind of put his own twist on it, and I think what we do, he is unbelievable. And I've been very honored to learn from him um, and look forward to the future and all the things that we can display. Um, but I mean, I think the way that he builds a program. Uh, the way that he's taken care of me in, in this business has um, been unbelievable. And I have as much gratitude for him. Uh, it's been awesome to work with him, to work for him. Um, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. Will game day be much different for you? I don't think so. You know, really, the last three years have been very similar to what we've, we've done. <clears throat> uh, he'll call, still call plays on game day. Um, he is, like I said, I think he's magical on game day. Um, and the best thing about um, working with Coach Long is it, at any point, uh, if you want to know why he's doing something, he'll tell you. And he's just got a feel. I mean, the, the call that he made against Houston in the bowl game where Ron Smith intercepts that ball, I mean, he sends a corner blitz on a, on a uh, screen to the boundary. He knew it was coming. And that wasn't something that they had shown on film. That wasn't something that, that they had done. They had tried it early on in the game. Um, he gets those things during, during the game where he just knew it was coming. And he called it, and shoot, we get a pick six. I mean, th those are things that you don't teach. That's just feel. And 
to be able to watch him do that and get those ideas is uh, it's been awesome. And so, yeah, no, I'm excited for the upcoming year with what we're going to do.